Now, there's a lot of activity in front of me here today, folks, because I'm back at Sacred Heart National School here in Killinarden. And if I turn around right behind me, I can give you a look at their stepping stone forest. This is the senior school. And my, 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 that forest looks to be coming on really well. We'll take a good look at that in a few minutes. But the reason I'm here today is because there's a stepping stone pond being installed and the lads are fevering away like mad down here. So let's go have a look. And of course, as always, Rob is pretending to work. As you can see, folks, John Kybert is also with, oh, he's lucky he's turning his back on me. How about that? But look at this, loads of volunteers beavering away. Okay, hey folks, as I said, we're here in Sacred Heart National School, the senior school in Killinarden. And as you can see in front of me, Rob Gondola is here. And Rob is here constructing a pond this morning. Rob, tell me why and tell me what's the purpose. Uh, yeah, so we're at it again. So the why is um, the incredible people in AWS and community. So that's um, Amazon Web Services have given us funding this year. It's John, it's lovely modeling. If you just want to swim over there, swing over there to John. Oh, John's over here. Look, Look at this. Oh, AWS and communities. Yeah. Very important. And that's Richie on the other side there, folks. Keeping it, yeah, keeping it real. So yeah, essentially, so AWS have actually funded our Stepping Stone Ponds project, which was, you probably heard us prattling on about it last year when we were doing the proof of concept of how this would actually work. And the aim is that now we're going back to schools where the Stepping Stone Forests have been put in by, by Daughter Action Group and, and John and, and Michael. And we're, we're complementing them now by providing a permanent water feature. So in this case, um, Senior National School and we have the Junior National School next door. So, you know, we're, they're very limited for space here in Kilnairden. So we're going to give them a nice, small, shallow pond, which is the best type for wildlife anyway. It's also safe. We're going to fence it off as well. Um, so that there's an added layer of safety, you know, when people aren't here during the summer. Um, as you can see in the background here, there's a rainwater harvesting system that the school have hooked up to the roof. So this is going to be completely sustainable, self-sufficient pond. We're only about halfway done today. Tomorrow we're going to come back with some ornamental rocks to come in and make it nice. And then we're going to bring in the heavy lifters. So that would be our aquatic plants. So we only use native aquatic plants in any of the ponds we've built. So this is pond number two for 2024. And so in the deeper bit, we're going to have a, a lily that's going to stay in its basket and we're going to have some oxygenators and um, probably just hornwort, which is a fantastic native oxygenator um, because it produces more oxygen than it consumes overnight. Um, and then because it's so flat and shallow, it's absolutely ideal for emergent and marginal plants. So we're going to fill it full of beautiful things like um, water forget-me-not, which have these beautiful little blue flowers. We're going to stick in some water mint so the kids have a bit of a sensory garden going on. So when they agitate it because it's like a mint plant, you know, they'll get the mint aroma. They'll be like, oh, it smells like toothpaste. Um, and we've tried this before on other skills last year. And then we have other things like we have um, an aquatic buttercup that can go in and Generally, what we do is we pick very colorful plants that won't get too high so the kids can see the water at all times. And also, most of the plants we pick are um, what are called um, rhizoma spreaders. So they spread by putting root systems into the water. And this has a combined um, additive effect that the bacteria on the rhizomes are absorbing the nutrients from the water. That keeps the water clean, but it also feeds the plant. So as the plant gets bigger and it grows, it keeps the water cleaner. So we've no need for electricity out here. We don't need a, a, an electrical pump. We don't need an electrical aerator. The plants are gonna do all of those heavy lifting jobs for us. It's exactly what wildlife wants. And just based on what we've seen this year, and we've gone back to review some of the ponds that we put in um, this time last year, actually, we've already seen that there's dragonflies um, dragonfly nymphs in the water in, in most of the other ponds. So, you know, we're automatically and straight away, we're given habitats for some of these creatures, you know, that the kids may find difficult to see in these parts of Tala unless they're down at the daughter. The daughter's a river, it's slightly different wildlife that, that like rivers as well. So, uh, you know, 
upon this lesson a year, you try and temper expectations and say, look, this could take three to five years for, for this to get really going for wildlife. But like based on our review, because we're planting up with native species, you know, wildlife is attracted to them almost immediately. And that's brilliant and it's great for kids. So you've got the pond, you'll have the stepping stone pond here, you have the step stone forest around the corner. And what we like to call these collectively, I suppose, is the living classroom. There's absolutely everything here for the teachers to bring like the junior school and the senior school out and they can do nature based modules now they can do their own pond dipping in the future um, and it can all be done on the school campus and you know it's a really important that kids get back into you know knowing what wildlife is local and um, knowing which wildlife and how long it takes for them to colonize the ponds you know, there's loads of activities they can do they can grow their own aquatic plants and um, they could get camera traps they could see like i'd imagine in kilnardin park beside us foxes will come in and, and they'll use the drink from the permanent water source um, with lots of birds, we we'll use it as a bird bath, you know, so we, we don't know anything could turn up um, and that's the beauty about having the, the pond feature, you know, the deepest part of this is less than two foot, it's probably more likely 50 centimetres, we don't live in Canada, right, we live in Ireland, it's unlikely to ever freeze solid, so, you know, it doesn't need to be deeper than that, most of the pond is kind of between 30 centimetres and five centimetres deep, so that's exactly where all your wildlife want to be, so um, that's the start. Um, we've another eight ponds to do this year, but uh, pond number two halfway through already, and we'll be back to finish tomorrow. And I'll join you, Rob, and we'll see what it looks like at that stage. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks as always, Rob. See you later. Take it easy. Go on for a cup of tea. As you can see, folks, the Mayor of South Dublin County Council, Alan Edge, has arrived to bless this to pond, bless I think. It. Exactly. Just to check Absolutely. out the wonderful work that the lads are doing. Yeah. And Alan's going to have a couple of words with us just to tell us how he feels about the whole idea of a stepping stone pond accompanying the stepping stone forest. Thanks, Michael. It's fantastic to be here. Um, it's really exciting, I think, to see this kind of next level stepping stones initiative, uh, the stepping stones pond. Uh, and I've just been here chatting to the experts about how it works and how it's made. Uh, recycled Formula One tires with some builder sand on top of it and rainwater, which is the key. And the rainwater is going to be harvested from the building here in the school. Uh, so it's incredibly sustainable uh, and uh, hopefully, and I'm sure, uh, it's going to attract lots of lovely creepy crawlies to it. Uh, and we really see a fantastic improvement here for the biodiversity in the area. So fantastic initiative. Uh, it's great that the volunteers are all getting behind it and uh, wish it well. And it's great to see you all again, hard at us. Um, I actually can't believe this is the same site from the visited yesterday. It just goes to show what a small group of volunteers, and it's volunteer week, what a small group of volunteers with the right direction um, can do in a very short space of time. And um, this is absolutely fantastic. It's fantastic for our climate action, but it's fantastic for the local community as well. I think the beauty of stepping stones, whether it's the pocket forests or whether it's the ponds, is bringing communities together, bringing volunteers together to do something for climate change. All climate action is local, it has to start somewhere, and you are doing amazing work. Um, and I know that the school are doing amazing work. Fair play to you, Sharon and Jerry. Um, and uh, look, this is going to be a fantastic addition to the school. I hope the kids will get to enjoy it and understand it, but no doubt they will. Um, and listen, many, many happy years with your ponds. Fair play, everyone. Thank you.
Okay, folks, as you can see, I'm back again at the Sacred Heart in Killinarden, in the senior school, with the wonderful Sharon, who's responsible for bringing Stepping Stone Forests and now Stepping Stone Ponds. Tell me, Sharon, how do you feel about not only have you got your Stepping Stone Forest, which you were responsible for, but you now also have a Stepping Stone Pond. Yeah, it's fantastic. These volunteers from Amazon came out and within two days they built a fully functioning pond. Um, it just adds to the biodiversity of the school. If there's going to be a suite of lessons that teachers can pull from to teach the children about how important ponds are, the animals that are attracted to them. Hopefully now we'll get some frogs. I know they're local, but hopefully we'll have them in our own pond. Um, the hedgehogs, we have our nest of uh, foxes up the back here that will use it and it's just incredible. It's really, really incredible that we get to have this in our school. Now folks that I'm back at Sacred Heart Senior School here in Kilnarden. It's an, there's been an amazing amount of work done since I was here yesterday. At the moment the pond is finished actually, believe it or not, already and they expect it to take two whole days to do all the work and it's not going to take that long at all. But anyway, what they're doing at the moment is these wonderful volunteers from Amazon they're putting in a fence and there's the great Rob Gandola in front of me. They're putting in a fence so that there are no accidents with the pond. So let's just have a closer look and we'll see all the Amazon volunteers and there's Richie in the distance waving at us. Folks, before I leave the Sacred Heart Senior School here in Killinarden, I'm just going to ask John Clybert for a final word on today's progress. As you can see, it's a high of activity behind us. Uh, we're putting the finishing, well, maybe not quite the finishing touch to the fencing. That is a kind of a, a barrier just to stop children from getting access to it without any supervision. Um, the pond is filling up as we speak. It's been planted up. So, it's all, all pretty good and behind the camera is one of the very first stepping stone forests that we've created so they're complementary habitats to each other and one will feed the other in terms of, uh, kind, of kind of animals creatures that will travel between the two of them so i'm delighted to have this one uh, under our belt so now i'll drop over and give you a look at the forest now, folks, I'm about 20 yards away from where you just saw John with the sign for the Stepping Stone Pond. And they're complementary to each other, the pond and the forest. But look how well this forest is coming on. I'll just walk along the outside here and give you a quick look at how well, look how tall some of those trees are. It's absolutely amazing. A lovely bit of colour in there as well. Now as I get to the furthest point from the school building I come to the arch that leads into the forest here. This will be the classroom for the children during summer months or even in winter if the weather allows. But look at this folks it's absolutely beautiful. Children are going to love having their lessons out in this environment. And these trees, by the time they start using it, probably next year, will be 
20 feet, 25 feet tall. Some of them already are 17, 18 feet tall. So it's a wonderful achievement by the people, the volunteers of Stepping Stone Forest. And I've come right around full circle. And there's the arch again in front of me, which I'm about to walk through. Thanks for watching Wildlife Wednesday, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. For now, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.